welcome back. Now, the political party funding declarations have surpassed 60 million rands in the second quarter of the 2022-2023 financial year. This is the highest quarterly, reported, uh, quarterly report donor disclosures since the Political uh, Funding Act came into effect in April last year. But My Vote Counts says the latest party funding disclosure highlights continued weaknesses in the act. The advocacy group says it is concerning that the multi-party democracy fund has not received any donations. To discuss this further, I am joined by My Vote Counts researcher Robin uh, Pesensi. Thank you so much, Robin, for your time here on ENCA. Of course, I think it was a concern already even last year about this particular part of the Political Party Funding Act because it shows that no South Africans, I mean, at some point, the IEC said that uh, uh, Kitty can even accept 100 Rand, but it looks like South Africans aren't willing uh, to put money there. Absolutely. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me on the show. And you're absolutely correct. The multi-party democracy fund um, has not taken off, I think, in the way that we had envisioned that it would. And really, the, the rationale for having it is because we've seen a situation, which is part of the reason why we needed the PPFA in the first place, is that we had a situation, and we see many still have that situation, where just a small group of very, very wealthy individuals are able to put large amounts, amounts of money into political parties. Um, but you don't really see the ordinary citizen, the ordinary South African, really being able to give voice to some of their concerns through donations. Um, and the multi-party democracy fund was envisioned as a way to increase competitiveness mm. of political parties as they contest the political space, particularly obviously at election time. And you can, in fact, as you say, donate as little as a hundred that any amount really, but it's not actually being taken up. In fact, the multi-party democracy fund, its largest donation came during the third quarter of disclosures last year, when it received a very sizable bump from Vodacom, um, just in the amount of about 5 million rand. But since then, no other large donations have been made. And it's very concerning because instead of stimulating multi-party democracy, we still have very wealthy individuals only backing sort of the political parties that they specifically want to see win. Mm. And of course, you know, I think this goes back to the point that you make in your report about the toxic relationship then between, um, you know, money and politics or donors themselves and politics, because it tells South Africans who the re who really is running the country, right, sort of. Absolutely. And I think what's important to say is that one isn't really making the argument that if you make a financial contribution or donation to a political party that you are doing something wrong or criminal. In fact, it is your right to do so if you want to. But the stark reality about living in South Africa is that we have this instance of deep-seated corruption, perhaps even in some ways state-sponsored corruption if you look at state capture. And just in a situation where we do see very clearly the link between making these large donations, putting out multi-million rand donations and reaping kind of influence from that. So that is a big concern. The second quarter, as you mentioned, largest declared donations ever under the PPFA in excess of 60 million rand. Just mm -hmm. to put that into perspective for you, for example, if we were to look at the DA, their declared total for this quarter is 35 million, just over 35 million rand. Last year, for the entire year of the PPFA, so in other words, over four quarters, they raised 47 million rand. So that means in this quarter alone, they raised 75% of their total donations in the previous year. So we are seeing a very large sort of uptick in the amount of donations political parties are now receiving. And I don't think it's wrong for us to ask the question, well, what is this money getting you, if anything at all? Mm. I just want to ask you a question, Robin, and I know it's a, it, it might be a very uncomfortable one. You know, when you talk about that uh, toxic relationship between the donors and politics or money and politics, uh, you look at what's happening around the ruling party at the moment, uh, where a lot of South Africans were saying this is obvious, he has to step down, etc., even though, you know, an impeachment process has not been voted on uh, in Parliament yet. But do you, uh, do you have any concern, as um, my vote counts, that, you know, when it comes to situations like this, 
this where uh, presidents and leaders are accused of something really serious or that could potentially be very serious, that there are those who donate money to those political parties who have a say, perhaps? I think it is a concern. I think this example that you've given up right now is exactly the kind of situation that we would want to guard against. I mean, I w we can't really make speculation for, or with certainty say that person A donated X amount specifically for the purpose of, let's say, removing a, a political leader. But we also can't rule out that the nature of politicking, at least in the South African context, has led to things that are precisely actually like that, where money can dictate if we, I'm a large donor, if you depend very much on my power, my influence, my money, that this can dictate some of the decisions that you're going to make at the executive level in your political party. Mm -hmm. And I think it is for us to shine a spotlight on that and to ask ourselves, well, who are these sort of kingmakers that are working in the background that could be influencing the decisions that are being taken around this um, specific political moment? Mm, thank you so much for speaking to us. Robin Pazensi, she is uh, from My Vote Counts. She is a researcher there.